A very good afternoon to you and welcome to this program today, Matters of Public Importance. I am Bishop Juan Edgil and I'm deputizing for my colleague, the Honorable Madam Gail Teixeira, your usual host of this program, who is unavoidably absent uh, this afternoon. Just to remind you that this program uh, comes to you as a complement of the People's Progressive Party civic uh, representatives in the National Assembly and the People's Progressive Party. This afternoon we will be discussing a number of issues with you and I would hope that we can open the telephone lines very early to be able to get your views so that we be able to have a useful uh, discussion. We'd however like to remind you that the leader of the opposition's office, which is located at 304 Church Street, that is between New Garden and Peter Rose Street on Church Street, is open to the public. We are there to receive you, hear your concerns, and to make representation on your behalf. Uh, you can find us on telephone numbers 225-3432, 225-3432, and that's the leader of the opposition's office at 304 Church Street. We are open every day, Monday through Saturday, and you can come in, visit with us, talk with us, uh, let us know your issues so that we'll be able to make a uh, representation on your behalf. A number of of Guyanese have been utilizing the services of that office uh, and I dare say even persons who did not necessarily support the PPPC at the last elections because our office is not just for supporters of the People's Progressive Party Civic but it's open to all Guyanese so we thank you and you can come and be a part of that uh, engagement. There are a number of matters of public importance that we want to talk about this afternoon. And I want to start with something that is current and topical. And that is the whole issue of corruption and the fight against corruption. You would recall that the APNU and the AFC, 2011 onwards, they made it a crusade to go after the PPPC, <coughs> excuse me, government, as it relates to corruption, corrupt acts, and corrupt dealings. They said they were decent. They said that they were clean. They said that they were the good guys. They said that they will do nothing wrong. They will follow the rule of law. You can expect good governance. Let's stamp out corruption. Stop cronyism. Stop victimization. Remember those big, huge banners that uh, were strung across the streets, across the country? Uh, vote APNU plus AFC. Stop corruption. Stop cronyism. Stop this. And they were promising the world. Well, between last night and noon, when I came to this studio, making the rounds, whether it's on Facebook or on other social media platforms, information is now becoming available that this government, having been exposed with a 632 million emergency purchases of pharmaceuticals and medical supplies to the Georgetown Public Hospital, the majority of which went to Anson McCall without any procurement process, without even the approval of the National Procurement and Tender Administration Board. They're in the news again. It would appear, 
from information that is becoming available that the cabinet at its subcommittee made a decision that the Ministry of Health, Georgetown Public Hospital Corporation in particular, can proceed to procure another 515 million plus Guyanese dollars worth of drugs and medical supplies from Ansem McCall on an emergency sole source basis and the cabinet is approving the waiver of procedures at the National Procurement and Tender Administration Board. Now, you know what happens in Guyana. Things come out, the government denies it, and then after you keep pushing and you keep pushing and you keep pushing, you get the truth. Well, there is posted on the Facebook by now. Uh, many people have already called us and asking what is really happening there. The actual cabinet decision signed by Minister Harmon dated 11th of September responding to a cabinet memo that came through the hands of the Minister of Finance that the subcommittee has approved the waiver of National Procurement and Tender Administration board procedures to allow the Georgetown Public Hospital Corporation to expend $515 million of taxpayers' money without any bidding process, sole sourced from Ansem McCall for pharmaceutical supplies. Now, this is where the problem is. This is what is called bold, bare-faced, I don't care what anybody say approach. And it is the continual trend of raping the public purse, passing monies to friends, family, and finances of the coalition government, pay back payback. This vulgarity must be exposed and must be stopped. I would expect that a Minister of State or the Minister of Health will come to the people of Guyana and make an explanation as it relates to this cabinet decision that is now in the public domain about this 515 million emergency purchases using sole sourcing to buy from Ansem McCall for the Georgetown Public Hospital Corporation. Could you imagine? You've already had a problem of $632 million early in the year. You fired the CEO. Well, we heard fired, but we are now learning that a distinguished gentleman's contract even though he is sent home, allows him to be paid way into 2019. So the, the CEO of the Georgetown Public Hospital is not at work. They told us that he's fired. But whatever is the arrangement, we are told, we are advised, and maybe the Minister of Health could clarify or the Chairman of the Georgetown Public Hospital Corporation can clarify, the man is still being paid his monthly salary uh, and that will continue until 2019. You've had the Public Procurement Commission launch an investigation. The Georgetown Public Hospital Corporation Board launched an investigation. The Minister of Health herself was in the hot water, on the fire. A member of the Public Procurement Commission is putting in a minority report recommending that a file be sent to the DPP recommending charges against the Minister of Health. And there you have the cabinet, the executive, the people who have been entrusted with the role of governing on behalf of all of the people and safeguarding the public interest. They are making a decision that says 
the Georgetown Public Hospital Corporation can procure $515 million worth of pharmaceuticals and National Procurement and Tender Administration Board procedures don't apply because the cabinet says those procedures must be waived. You know what is normally supposed to happen? The Ministry of Health or the Georgetown Public Hospital Corporation is supposed to write the tender board making the case of why these drugs should be sole source because of the emergency nature and as a national procurement and tender administration board having received that request for waiver will grant that waiver so that they could go ahead with the purchase now that is not what is happening here the cabinet is making a decision that says the tender board has no role here we are giving 515 million dollars in in, in, in in a contract to answer McCall and we are waiving the requirement of going to the tender board to follow the procurement act vulgarity vulgarity and it's what I call bold barefaced presumptuous clumsy actions by this government and you know while they are apologists and they are people who fairly want to give the Granger led administration a chance by uh, trying to display them as decent and as good and as God fearing let us see it for what it is even if the 632 million was a mistake as is being claimed by the minister and others I tried to fast track it they were supposed to follow procedures the CEO allowed his staff to mislead him he went ahead without this and all the fancy explanations that we are getting why would the cabinet now make a decision that allows this kind of a vulgarity to continue which basically says the National Procurement and Tender Administration Board has no say in this matter. The Procurement Act don't need to be followed because we are waiving. We are using executive diktat to waive procurement procedures and the Procurement Act. And the Georgetown Public Hospital can go ahead and go sole source to answer McCall and procure $515 million dollars worth of drugs taxpayers money you and I are the ones who are paying for that and this is the same people who went on the soap box on the stages and the platforms and on the television denouncing the PPPC for corruption now what are they doing corruption is not a perception anymore in Guyana it is reality so that's the first thing I want to bring to your public notice this afternoon. Secondly, we want to continue to talk about the incompetence of this administration. The incompetence of this David Granger-led administration. They're incapable of implementing their own budget. Could you imagine a government sat down with their technical experts prepared a financial plan for 2015 2016 and 2017 huge budgets big numbers allocating monies to ministries and agencies for capital and current expenditure this is what we will do for Guyana in 2015 underperformance 2016 underperformance we are now in September of 2017 and the budget is underperforming I have made it public money is not the issue it is the incompetence of the policy makers and those who are given direction to the technical people 
and the technocrats who have to implement. Listen, we had the same bureaucracy while we were in government. You have permanent secretaries, you have project management units, you have uh, planning officers, and you have all the tiers and layers of accountability in the government apparatus that you have to go through. What has changed all of a sudden? That the government is unable to implement its own budget. Remember, they came to you through the Ministry of Minister of Finance when he read the budget and said, this is what we will do in 2017. They said, this is what we will do. We will spend so much money on this. We will execute that. We will do that in this village. And today, less than 40%, less than 40% of their budget has been implemented. Now you're hearing all kinds of excuses, sabotage, uh, we lack project managers, uh, things are not moving as expected. Come on, let's stop making the excuses and admit the reality. We have a government who is sailing. They are sailing. The ministers are incapable and unable to deliver. It is incompetence. It is incompetence. It's, why would you have 27 ministers and you can't implement your budget? One ministry had three ministers. The ministry of the presidency now got five or seven ministers. You could never be sure because you got Minister Harmon, you got Moses Nagamutu, you got George Norton, you got Hastings, you got Felix. And, 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 the, and the number is adding. Why are they unable to implement their budget? Ministry of Public Works, now Public Infrastructure, got two ministers and still not implementing their budget. It ain't got nothing to do with how many people you put there. And by the way, all these ministers, you know I have gotten myself in trouble for speaking the truth. Their super salaries that is costing the Treasury almost $1 billion over this term of office in monies, more than what the PPPC was expending on its cabinet. I have been the subject of hearings at the Com Committee of Privileges of the National Assembly because I spoke out against this vulgarity. But I will not be silent on it. And here we see the continual incompetence. The third matter that I want to raise with you this afternoon is just before I got here to start this program, young people who knew that I was coming here today asked me to put it to the government and for the public to answer the question, why is it that young people with qualifications why is it that young people who would have qualified themselves we're not talking here young people just seeking a hustle bright young people who have qualified themselves distinguished themselves gone through the full gamut of, of, of pursuing education at the highest level why is it that they're not getting work with the government whether it's ministries or agencies of the government. They have said, I don't know, you need to say it. You need to discuss it. They see the vacancies. They apply not even a letter of acknowledgement. Nobody is getting hired from those who have spoken to us. And the question is, are these jobs being kept for family and friends of special people in this government? And this is really from the ground. Our young people are very concerned that they are not getting employed. Now, the truth about it, there is no massive program to create employment in the country.
So that's one issue. As a matter of fact, people are losing jobs. But the young people are saying they are seeing vacancies advertised in the government sector. And when they apply, even though they have the requisite skills, experience, qualifications, they're not being hired. Not a word even to acknowledge their applications. And they want to know if these jobs, even though advertised, especially reserved for special people. And the question is, you have to get links in order to get work. That reminds us of the days of yesteryear. While the PNC regime governed or ruled, whichever word you want to use, Guyana, when the party cared, and it's not your qualifications, but it's who you know, made you get a job. We need to see good governance in Guyana. And I use this program this afternoon to make a pitch on behalf of our young professionals, our young people who have been diligent to pursue education, their training. Let's give them a chance. We cannot just lock off employment for friends and families. And that is part of why we are having the non-implementation. Because we're having square pegs in wrong holes. We're just giving jobs for the boys and the girls. Huge salaries and benefits, but they're incapable of doing the job. Let's give young people a chance. We'd also like to remind, and that's the fourth issue I want to bring to public notice this afternoon. We're still awaiting the president to pronounce or to name the chairman of the Guyana Elections Commission, GCOM. The leader of the opposition has already presented that third set of names, and we have not yet heard from the president. This delay in the chairmanship of GCOM is, costing, is causing sorry, restlessness among our society and this must not be allowed to continue your voices must be heard on this one we must speak out against this this delay this dilly dallying even after the chief justice would have granted her ruling defining and clarifying what were the questions that were lingering in the society after the president rejected the first list and then a second list, we're still yet to see and to hear from the president as it relates to the naming of the chairman of the Guyana Elections Commission. And the last matter that I want to talk about before I open the phone lines is as it relates to what is happening with the Guyana police force. I have spoken to some very senior officers of the Guyana Police Force, and they're all stepping on coals, tiptoeing, unable to settle down and function professionally because they don't know if they're next. Or, 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 or their heads, you, you should say, is on the chopping block. They don't know what will happen. There's so much uncertainty. Because promotion in the Guyana Police Force, except the position of the commissioner, which requires a particular process of engagement between the president and the leader of the opposition and deputy commissioner, was secured through an independent police service commission. Recommendations would be made. Files would be reviewed based on merit, performance, upgrading yourself and qualifications, you'll be promoted. Now the president has ordered the Police Service Commission 
to halt all promotions. An act that is contrary to the constitution of Guyana because commissions are not subject to the control and the direction of any authority, whether it's the president, the cabinet, politicians, whether in government or in opposition, commissions are to function independently. And I can tell you because I chaired a constitutional commission, the Ethnic Relations Commission, for many years. And we made decisions and took actions that I'm sure made the executive very uncomfortable, requested information from them to pursue particular actions that I'm sure in the disclosure of, those inf of that kind of information made them uncomfortable. But no president, no head of the presidential secretariat or minister of state or minister of the government dared calling me as chairman or any member of the commission to tell us what to do and what not to do or which direction to go or which direction not to go. The decisions of the commission were made in the boardroom and once those decisions were made, the staff was obligated to implement those decisions without political interference or control from anyone. And now you have a president dictating to the police service commissions you cannot consider promotions? This is terrible. So you know what's going to happen? We got young police officers, mid-30s, early 40s, who have qualified themselves, who have moved up the rank, who dreamt one day of becoming assistant commissioner or commissioner or deputy commissioner and holding high office as a career policeman. You know what this is doing to them? If you don't toe the line and follow political masters, your career could be jeopardized. How unfair is this? We have slipped back into authoritarianism, we have slipped back into dictatorship. We have slipped back into control of the machinery of the state by the ruling party. And it's what was called paramountcy of the party. I call upon all constitutional office holders. Stand your ground. Whether it's the ombudsman, whether it's the DPP, where is the judiciary, where is the public service appellate tribunal, where is the rights commissions, where is the teaching service commissions, where is the parliament office, where is GCOM. You are guaranteed operational and financial independence. And you should not be cowing or genuflecting at the altar of the executive and taking political instructions that interfere with your independence. Guyana needs such strong institutions to safeguard the welfare of its citizens. We cannot allow ourselves to be bullied by a government that is not prepared to follow the rule of law. Fancy speeches about we are for good governance and we are for transparency and we are for accountability is not fooling the Guyanese people. Your actions is what really matter. So I've raised a number of issues with you this afternoon and I think it's a good time. We have about 30 minutes to engage on uh, the telephone and I will start taking in calls. Um, please, let's be respectful in our discussion, and I will be very um, concerned about callers who are calling with private numbers, because we're not sure what is your intention. So let's take the first caller this afternoon. Good afternoon. Welcome to Matters of Public Importance. What I do for people in PPP time? I do nothing for people. People suffer in PPP time. 
That is your contribution? Yeah. I uh, don't know if people be saying, what is my talk here, Mr. Ranger? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It is clear that when your message is effective, you have responses like these. Persons who are specially planted not to deal with the issue at hand, but to deflect and misdirect people. So rather than us dealing with the corruption of the 515 million, what did PPP do for the people? Let's see this next caller. Good afternoon. Welcome to Matters of Public Importance. Uh, yeah, Mr. Adrian. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. I, 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 like, I, I would like to find out why you're not beating this government. Why, why you, what do you have done for us? That is your question? Yes, yes. Thank you. I will answer it. The, the, the first thing I would like to uh, highlight, nobody is lambasting the government. We are bringing to public notice the actions, the insincerity, and the indecency as it relates to what is happening by this APNU AFC government. So that's the first thing. The second thing that the caller has asked, what have we done for the people? The fact that he can call on this program and ask such a question is one of the things that we have done for this country. The restoration of democracy, giving people freedom, giving people hope, expanding the economy, moving us from a bankrupt state where we were spending 96 cents on every dollar to service debt, bringing us into a place where we could see our infrastructure improve where we could have brought universal primary education and almost achieved universal secondary education, improving health care right down into the hinterland regions. Yes, ensuring that households and families were able to have potable water, ensuring that our senior citizens enjoy a better life, ensuring that the standard of living of the Guyanese people improved and reducing poverty in the country so i could go on and on and on the question here now is not about what the ppp did you should be asking the question is the apnu afc fulfilling the promises that they have made to the people of guyana good afternoon welcome to the matters of public importance good afternoon brother you know what you're doing a good work and people don't like people when they're talking the truth and you continue doing what you're doing thank you sir is that your contribution yes sir thank you very much we we have to be very objective good afternoon and welcome to matters of public importance yes yes Mumbai. Continue in Mumbai. yes is there a question or a comment that, a concern that you want to make no man, I just I just glad to see what you're doing in your hearing. You understand? Keep doing your good work, man. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, caller. Hi, good afternoon. Yes, sir. Yeah, I hear you talking about the procurement of jobs at the Georgetown Hospital. Yes, sir. I go in there for seven years now, but this is the worst I ever reach up with. Mm -hmm. I went there Tuesday. A doctor prescribes some simple medication like Panadol. Mm -hmm. Thing like glycoside for diabetic people, mm -hmm. because pressure, and none of the tablets are in yet. I had to go and post it there. Mm -hmm. So I don't know where we go in. I know when I used to go with when PVP time, I used to get every single thing I think to think about. Doctor was there to look me and everything, but now we have to wait long, long. And I reach at 4 o'clock in the morning, and I was left until 2 o'clock in the All right, caller, we will make a note of this, but you know, we have highlighted this issue of drug shortages throughout the country we brought a motion in the national assembly it was um defeated because the ministers denied that there was any drug shortages but you know when it came to the public accounts committee and we questioned the regional officers they all admitted drug shortages so even though the government in the parliament were, they were economical with the truth because in the parliament you can't use words like lies but I can tell you here this afternoon they lied 
They deceived the people of Ghana by saying there's no drug shortage. You know we wrote letters and made representation about the children who didn't have insulin type 1 uh, diabetic children were struggling with for their livelihoods and, and as it relates to their health. And they are still making emergency purchases of another 515 million. So I don't know what is going on. Good afternoon, caller. You're on to matters of public importance. Hi, good afternoon, Mr. Edger. How are you today? I'm very well, thank you. God bless um, you. I just want to make one comment. I'm a, a right farmer on the rail there. Mm -hmm. And since this government take over, I'm I done with rice because I didn't see no progress, sir. And I just feel me hard to know. I get to plan back my rice bed. Well, it's obvious that this call is becoming very emotional with the pain and the suffering that he's feeling here. Yes, sir, yes. We will continue to make representation on your behalf, sir. You know the promises that they made to people in the rice sector, particularly Mr. Moses Nagamutu, yes, sir. who is on video and audio promising rice farmers how they will get what, how much thousand dollars a bag for paddy and all the rest of it. And they have destroyed the sector one is left to understand and, and to really analyze rice and sugar because a lot of the supporters of the PPP came from those sectors is there a deliberate effort by this government to strangulate and destroy these sectors as a way of crippling the PPP but sir we gotta hold the faith hope is coming soon yes sir. we have to take this back and we will bring and restore joy to the, the hearts of the people of Guyana Okay, so we have made a note of your suffering. Yes. Thank you. Good afternoon. Welcome to Matters of Public Importance. Good afternoon to you, sir. Good afternoon. <laughs> PPP was so beautiful. You, could, you, could, could, could you please turn off your phone or your uh, TV or something because we're getting a feedback in the station. PPP was so beautiful mm -hmm. that you were getting every money turnover. So beautiful, everything was pick and span. Mm. Ever since this government take over, there is no business, money not circulating, taxes high. They don't know what they're doing. But you know what? What you know what is the uh, excuse that they were spreading is that the PPP had drugs money circulating in the economy, and they have taken all the drugs money. That's why things are hard. But, you've, but since they're in government, we don't find two planes. You see the size of the drug halls that they've been having coming out of Guyana? So it was the PPP that they were saying that we were allowing drug money to circulate. There are more drugs being found now it, since this government. Bigger catches, which means the drug trade is still alive, but the economy is bad. So that lie that it was drug money that was keeping the economy up can't stand anymore. People are feeling the squeeze. They are only making excuses because their own people are kicking against them. Well, sir, I said earlier it's incompetence. It is incompetence. They're, they're unable to run the government. They don't know how to administer. They don't know how to manage. They, don't, they, they, they can't lift the hopes of the people. They cannot implement a vision to see this country grow and expand. And this false hope that they are peddling, that when we start pumping oil, everything is going to be hunky-dory, it's not true. You will see what will happen. You will see what will happen. If they can't manage the gold sector, they can't manage rice, they can't manage sugar, could they manage multi-billion dollar oil? They are incompetent and incapable. We need to make that point known. All right, sir. Thank you very much. Good. Good afternoon and welcome to Matters of Public Importance. Good afternoon, Mr. Edgell. Good afternoon. I want a, a complaint about Gairo and, and, and um, the water. The water is Gairo. The techway, the, the, the uh, pension, the money from the pension, you used to get the, the subsidy, and now you've got to pay one set of money. What you money? You've to pay Gairo. What's it's money? It's not fair at all. You, uh, people are getting the light, they are getting the, the water no more, and you got to pay a set of money. You got to give that mm -hmm. Then you don't have to put your people contract for pay, little bit, pay bit with the big, big bill they give giving you. Well, the truth about it, at the office of the leader of the opposition, we have received numerous complaints 
of the deterioration in services of the utilities, mm -hmm. electricity, telephone, and water. Mm -hmm. But the bills keep climbing. As a matter of fact, people have been complaining about incorrect billing. They have paid and they are still being billed again. That, that seems to be some racket that is going on at Guy yes. Wood. It's this, a racket. Some racket is going on there. Every time. month you're paying your money. Yeah, when you go to get a big, big bill yes. and then put up on a contract and you got to pay this bill, no matter who you got to. <laughs> so the old people that spend this money with a deep on this, this old age pension, so that no, no, no sense, no use. It's like if they're taking it back for all the people to be giving you, they're taking it back now. Well, it was the APNU AFC that promised a good life. But they did not tell the people of Guyana who will get the good life. It's that okay. small group mm -hmm. who have raised their salary, mm -hmm. who now have health insurance that could take them to Ireland to look after them when they're sick, who have super salaries, who everything is paid for, and who could hire family and friends around them and pay them 500000 and above so that they, it's not a good life for the masses. And that is why come 2020, we must pick the right team to ensure that Guyana is back on track. Okay. Thank you, sir. A very good afternoon. Welcome to Matters of Public Importance. Yeah, one edge of the afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. I don't like, you see, this this, this thing we're doing on television is promoting racialism. Where's promoting racialism? Speaking the truth? Which part of any, which part? No, 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 no. I'm not going to allow you, I'm not going to allow you to be abusive, sir. Which part of this discussion I, this listen, afternoon spread what? racialism? You're, you're there was nothing, because, because fine, there was nothing. Fine, fine. What you do? I, I need to terminate this call. There is nothing on this program this afternoon where any caller discuss anything about race nothing and i would not allow such an insertion to misdirect the people of guyana we are speaking here about what affects the people of guyana and at no time was racial insinuation or insertion of racial overtones on this program so i would not allow it good afternoon welcome to matters of public importance Good afternoon, my friend. Good afternoon. Um, let, let me explain to you what, we, what this country is really going through. We had 50 years of, of political um, ups and downs in this country by both political parties. Mm -hmm. And none of these political parties so far, given the A and U for the past two years that they are in office, we have to give them a little more time. But nothing that these two political parties have done has healed the wound of racialism in this country but for the natural development of the people of this country. If we are to depend on oil, we hold, remember that we have natural resources, but we don't fix prices for natural resources. Mm -hmm. Natural resources go up and down every day. Mm -hmm. We have to buy spare parts. We have to buy all of these different things, right? Which government is in office? They will have to face the consequence of how the Europeans or all the Chinese or the Indians set their price for the technology. So the, 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 the development of the... Um, the material development of the country mm. lies in the hands of foreigners. I must say to a great point. Yes, I would agree with that, that a lot our market, the, 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 the prices we get for our commodities on the international market are being driven by what is happening in the global economy. So we could establish that, but we also need to understand that that's not the only issue that needs to be addressed our own management of what is available to us. For example, I spoke a little earlier about the non-implementation of the budget. We have a $250 billion budget, but it's underperforming. What is causing that? International and global economics? A great point, sir. Huh? So a great point. The, no, 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 no. The money is available here. No, no, the money is available. What is stopping the building of the roads? What is stopping the repair of the schools? What is stopping drugs getting to the hospitals? Foreign exchange. Foreign no, exchange. we don't have a problem with foreign exchange, sir. Foreign money. We no, we don't have a problem with foreign exchange. We, we have should, to have foreign we money. Should not make, we should not make excuses. Well, this is a growing country, my brother. Yes, we are a developing growing country. country. And the struggle that both political parties go to to build this country lies heavenly, depends heavenly upon foreign investment. Well, you, you, you would have seen the records that have now become available. 
You have seen the records that have now become available. No, the PPP had their ups and downs. The PPP yeah, had uh, their every political party has its this problems. Party, you know, this, this, the, the, the APNU, the coalition, mm -hmm. they, they will have little ups and downs. Mm -hmm. let, let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. The small man at the bottom at this moment, the mm -hmm. small man at the mm -hmm. bottom, is having a better chance than five years ago, five years ago. That, 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 that is your personal view, but I'm sure that's not the view of the majority of... That's not the view of the majority of the people of Guyana because no, no, you no, talk. No. That's you, not from your media. No, 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 no. We talk to people all the time, sir. Yeah, you, yeah, we you, talk you, to no, people you, all you, the you time. You will be reactionaries, and you will talk, and you will publish who you want to publish. Mm -hmm. you, you will not publish who you want to. But I'm, I'm allowing your, I'm allowing your view to be published. But I'm oh. telling you. Yeah, the small man at this moment in this country. That's your and personal you, view. That's not the view of the majority of the people of this the country. Small man in this country is working for a little bit of money. Mm -hmm. I cannot work for the people in the sugar industry. Mm -hmm. As when, 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 when the sugar was going nice, mm -hmm. they were enjoying it. Now when sugar is not going good, mm -hmm. they still want to cry. They mm -hmm. should have saved their money and they should have created themselves for, for, for this moment. They want to jump and blame the government. It's like a woman and she was one. Everything she blame she was one. Everything she blame she was one. And she was one blaming, bl blaming your wife, blaming your wife. We got to stop this thing in this country. And mm -hmm. we got to tell... So what is the solution? Tell me what is the solution? The solution, I think, in this country is that uh, the People's the, the, um, the, the Coalition or the People's National Congress or the PPP, I think we should come to an agenda where either of these parties should go into office and stay no longer than 10 years. We need a political system that is not like the European system. We need to develop our own system here. Either we agree that the People's National Congress or the Coalition or the PPP stays in office for 10 years and work to the best and be held accountable and be held accountable. Sir, we already have a political system that is based upon democratic norms through free and fair elections where you can have change of governments, representation by the people and all the rest of it. So if you say that we need to have further constitutional reform, yes, we, do. We, we, we have been hearing about that. And the People's Progressive Party Civic have already indicated we were here, that we I, are very open. We were hearing that same language out of the people's. Yeah, but let us let us see what this coalition that government who promised the, the people constitutional the, reform is coming with. Let them bring it forward. When the PPP had had the country, they tell us all this country for the rest of their life. No, that's not true. I'm telling you this. No, no political party, even if people want to say that, no political party would ever believe that they can govern for the rest of their lives. Oh, we are in Europe. It, look, 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 except are in except Europe. you are a dictator and you plan to rule by force and not by the will this of the people. This country is not being ruled by force at the moment. This country is not being ruled by force? No. All right, well... This country is being ruled by the will of the people. Okay, okay. Thank I, you very much. I, I have heard your view, but I just will let you know that while I disagree with your view, I have allowed it to be published and I want to say to you, that that's not the view of the majority of the people of Ghana. Thank you. Good afternoon. Welcome to Matters of Public Importance. Yeah, good afternoon, Mr. Ashera. Good afternoon, sir. I'm happy to meet this program. Very well, sir. I make two contributions to this yes. program. Yes. You have called before and you're calling back again. No, nah, I know. Call. It's the same number, 225 P to Sant that has called five times already but since we're having this program. This so this is a this is a this is a phone bank that has been established somewhere by some sinister group to attack this program. Exactly. Same number. No, listen to this number. Same number two two five five two zero one. No, listen to what I'm telling you, Mr. My number is two three one zero one zero six eight one. All right, let me hear your view, sir. No, you want to check the number. There is Mr. Thomas' number. Okay, I'm seeing a one zero six eight one. All right, go ahead. Go I ahead. I only said this number from you claiming that you'll call you. It's, it's it's before me right now again. Two two five five two zero one on the screen. So how do happening? And you it got, is, you it, gotta check. You gotta check what we're going on with you system. But okay. Here's what I wanna make. I wanna make two contributions to yes. the program. Mm -hmm. And it's because I know you and you know me. Mm -hmm. We've spoken in personal radio industry. Mm -hmm. And I always advise you that the PPP may find that this country got a difference between PPP or AP and UAFC running. I find that this country got a problem with whoever government running got to mm -hmm. run this country under righteous governance. Mm -hmm. If a government does not have righteousness within them, so we need righteous it government. No sense, it makes no sense to try to run 
a country where they got to govern a nation. Divine, define for uh, the people of Guyana righteous government for me because you know righteous, the righteous, APN you said it on my righteous bishop, government. You're, you're a bishop and you're supposed to know what righteous No, define for the people. Don't let me tell them. You tell them what's righteous government and let them see if we have a righteous government right now. Well, okay, of course, if they got, if they got errors that, well, not if, there's, there's errors that created right now that has been before people's eyes. You know, right away, that door is a part of corruption, which we call wickedness, or which we call whatever out of righteousness. Mm -hmm. We call it, we, that we're dealing with righteousness, we're dealing with something that is being governed for all people, regardless of whether race, color, or creed. Mm -hmm. And it's... Centuries of years, you understand me, that black people, large, the culture, large, the God, and being colonized by the Europeans and, we, we, and the we, Western... We should, be, caref Western we should, be, careful the, we should be careful with the use of ethnic terms. We should be careful with the use of ethnic terms. Why are you saying that? I'm saying that because this must be a responsible program that must not degenerate into a discussion of the race. Car before, a man called before and he's saying to you that well, um, why are you trying for... Uh, Spread ra racial discrimination. Yeah, and I told him this program does not allow and that. So then, so then he would understand now. If I speak in this way, that it was openly, not whether a man is a coolie, a black man, or a Chinese. But like we say, and let me stick to the point. Yes, yeah, sir. To the first point is that we need righteous government. What? Yeah, What's the next movie. point? Because we have to lower the colors. When you when you when you when you when you consider that you're righteous and you decide to serve, you understand me. And the righteousness you can serve for everyone. If you mm. don't. You're going to start for yourself. Mm -hmm. For yourself, you live in pain and live for others, you live again. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much, Carla. I believe we need righteous government. But don't, let, me, let me make it very clear for the people again. A righteous no government is not going down in a church and kneel down and pray. It's your actions. By your fruit, you shall know them. There are men who kneel down and pray, and then they get up and they cut your necks off. And they do it in the name of God. That's not righteousness. Righteousness cannot be when you deceive people by hiding the truth from them and speaking lies and deception. And when confronted, you try to spin it off with misinformation like what is happening now. Righteousness is not just singing fancy songs in church. It's not a talk. It's a walk. And this government put up their banners in the street of Guyana. Time for righteousness. They must be judged by what they told the people. Are they righteous by these actions? Are they righteous by raping the public purse of another $515 million of taxpayers' money without giving an opportunity for public bidding and tendering and evaluation and proper awards, but you're giving it to a campaign financer for drugs and medical supplies in the Georgetown Public Hospital? That can't be righteousness. Let me take in another call. Good afternoon. Welcome to Matters of Public Importance. Good afternoon, Mr. Anker. Good afternoon. Hello? Look like we have lost that caller. Good afternoon. Welcome to Matters of Public Importance. We are coming down to program time. And we, good afternoon, welcome to Matters of Public Importance. Yes, Mr. Sergio, that call was talking about this small man being better off. Which world are you living in, man? No. Not Guyana. Well, I, I did say to him that represents his personal view. Probably he has been asked to make that view, but that doesn't represent the view of the vendor. That don't represent uh, the, uh, the view of the small logger from Hururu and Kokwani. That don't represent the view of the taxi driver who haven't made a money for the day yet. That don't represent the view of the fruit vendor who's dumping their fruits because it's not selling. That don't represent the view of the single mothers who are uh, working at night and now being threatened that they will have to stop working at night to, to take care of their family. It don't represent the view of the ordinary people. So we know that. Good afternoon. Welcome to Matters of Public Importance. Yes, Mr. Ejel. Mr. Ejel is me again, the person. Yes. I speak on behalf of myself. I was born on a colonialist in this country. Uh -huh. I started political will of both parties, both leading parties in this country. And this party that is in power right now, let, let me say, the, I, I don't know, I, I like to say the APNU, but let me talk about the People's National Congress. The People's National Congress is the only party that have always uplifted the people of this guy. Mm -hmm. The People's National Congress are the only people that have only taken this country. So out why, they didn't the contest, why they didn't contest the elections at the People's National Congress? If they are so good, 
and they have always uplifted the people of Guyana. Why they had to hide? Why they had to hide from the people of Guyana? We are not a tribal people. The People's National Congress is not a tribal party. The People's National Congress is the only party that is interested in the development of this country and the people of this country. That's the People's National Congress. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much, my brother. The People's National Congress that disguise themselves to People's National Reform, National Congress Reform. Then for the disguise themselves, the People's National Congress reform one Guyana. Then disguise themselves to the APNU because of the atrocities of the past and the baggages that they had. They couldn't face the people. They had to change their names. But it's the same people all the time. Good afternoon. Welcome to Matters of Public Importance. Thank you, sir. You, you, you're a gentleman of the clergy. And yeah. I admire and respect you. Mm -hmm. Now, Dr. J. Jagbeu said to the people at Babu John that if they lose the elections at the PPP, that the GDF will break down their doors and rape their wives and their... I, 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 I won't allow you to continue with this because you are not quoting Dr. Jack. You're correct and you're misconstruing what he said. No, no, no I'm not That is not what he that said. That is public knowledge. That is not what he said, sir. That is exactly if, what he if, said. If you could produce yeah. a video, an audio, or a transcript that Dr. Jagdio used those words, I will engage you in a conversation. But until then, I will not allow you to use this medium to spread something that is incorrect. So I can't allow it to continue, sir. Good afternoon. we got five minutes to close. We've taken a couple of calls, and then we start winding up. Good afternoon, and welcome to Matters of Public Importance. Yes. Good, good afternoon, Comrade Edgeson. Yes. And I would like to commend you for the way you treated those callers that call in with racial slurs. You are doing an excellent job. And I want to urge you to continue doing that. Now, my point I want to raise, there is so much speculation with this government on the revenue that is going to come in from oil production. Mm -hmm. Now, I am aware, and I'm sure you're aware, the oil production worldwide, there is not a shortage. So there is no bingo in going to that oil market with 100,000 barrels a day oil production. There is no bingo there. Mm -hmm. What is going to happen when we carry our 100,000 barrels a day to the oil market? It's going to drop the price of oil. So let this government know clearly. They look for a bingo when they had the 50th independence anniversary and they expected an economic boom. It didn't happen. Now they expected it when the CPL tournament was on, it didn't happen. Now, they're doing it with oil production. But let them know, it's not a bingo. It's a plus for Guyana, yes. But it's not the bingo that they're looking forward to. All right, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Well, thank you, caller. For all Guyanese, we look forward to a thriving, vibrant, profitable oil industry that will benefit all Guyanese. As a matter of fact, I need to remind all Guyanese, it was under the People's Progressive Party civic government that ExxonMobil come here, and it was under the People's Progressive Party civic that oil was found. We have now moved from exploration, and we're getting ready for production. The caller is right. The price will be determined by what is happening on the world market. Right now, oil is about $50 a barrel. And based upon all of the things that are in the mix, it is profitable for ExxonMobil and its partners to proceed. We would hope that Guyana will get its fair share and that we will be able to get good profits for the development of our country. This will have to be the final call and then we close up. Good afternoon. Welcome to Matters of Public Information. Yeah, good afternoon, sir. I'm credit to God. Uh -huh. um, what I'd like to say, 
you is one of the best voice my have the answer on this program because you know the, the answer to every question. Listen to me, you learn what you have to try or to do. And I tell you something, you is the right person here. Listen to my question is this. And, and this, what you are saying, is exactly what I think. This government, this ministry, is incompetent to run this country. You know what? You watch the job situation in this country. We are dropping, everything is dropping in this country. Who are talking by us? That is their business. We must, we must stick to a point to the correct view. Right? They are trying to close down showing us. You are closing down right. Where are we going? We right. have white section in the hand, which was developed this country all the time. Well, we got 15 seconds to close, yes. so let me get a final comment. Yes. The big point is, they are trying, as what you say, they are trying to break up this country by closing the industry down. All right, and, sir. And closing the job too. All right, sir. Good. Thank you. We want a government that is not just only the decisions, must not only be motivated by politics and the numbers in the ballot box in particular communities. When we're going to make decisions about sectors, we must be thinking about the whole country, whether it's sugar, whether it's rice, like we have to face the bullet with bauxite, whether it's affecting the loggers, whether it's vendors, whether it's sweeper cleaners, whether it's teachers, policemen, or nurses. We must be looking at ethnicity and demographics in the ballot box. We must be talking Guyanese. Here is where we have to go. I have to thank all of the callers who called this afternoon. It was a joy sitting in for Madam Gail Tashiri here on matters of public importance. And we promise you, we will continue to keep this government feet to the fire and demand transparency and accountability. They must answer to the people of Guyana because we want good governance and we want a country where all Guyanese are benefiting. God bless you. Good afternoon. me questions out of that book all day long and I guarantee you I will get every one of them right. If you can stop me, I'll buy you guys lunch. Well, if you get them right, I'll buy you lunch. Sounds good to me. This is Pawn Stars. Hey, how's it going? Hey, good. How you doing? Uh, I've got a custom motorcycle I want you to take a look at. I got a back lot over there. You want to bring it around? Yeah, sure. All right, I'll meet you back. All right, thanks. It's no secret that I love motorcycles. Hell, I think I actually have like 13 at this point. But whether it's for me or the shop, I'm always interested in buying another one.